Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Like few other economic concepts, aggregate supply is unique in that it is analyzed through two scopes, the short run and the long run. In this video, we'll focus on long-run aggregate supply. Long-run aggregate supply is defined as the total quantity of all goods and services in real domestic GDP that an economy is capable of producing with the full employment of their resources. Essentially, long-run aggregate supply shows us an aggregate economy's production possibilities, given that all their resources are used to their full capacity. This is the long-run aggregate supply curve. Notice that it is a perfectly vertical curve, implying that the relationship between aggregate price level and aggregate real GDP output supplied is constant. This means that as prices increase due to inflation in the aggregate economy, firms across the economy are not willing or able to produce a greater quantity of real GDP output, and therefore supply the same quantity. As prices fall due to deflation in the aggregate economy, firms across the economy are not willing or able to produce a lesser quantity of real GDP output and therefore supply the same quantity. Remember that short run and long run analysis refers to available resources, the land, the labor, and capital used for the purpose of production. In the long run, the quantity of all three types of resources is variable, meaning it is possible for firms to increase or decrease the quantity of all of these types of resources when producing real GDP output. Suppose C&H produces sugar in the long run. Because the quantities of land, labor, and capital available to CNH are variable and can change, CNH can compare different plant capacities to find their optimal rate of production. Fewer plants may mean a rate of production that is too slow. Many plants may mean a rate of production that is too fast. The firm can use variable resources to fine tune their plant capacity to find the optimal rate of production where they can use all of their available resources to their full efficiency. In macroeconomics, the law of variable resources in long-run analysis is true for all firms across the entire economy, meaning that the long-run aggregate supply curve indicates the full potential real GDP that the aggregate economy can produce at a sustainable rate, given that all resources are variable. And so, the long-run aggregate supply curve is the equivalent of an economy's production possibilities curve, or its growth trend line, and the quantity of real GDP output produced at the long-run aggregate supply curve is known as quantity full employment. Because resource quantities are variable in the long run, long-run aggregate supply assumes that wages, the cost of acquiring resources, are variable and will rise and fall with price level. In fact, we assume that it will match inflation and deflation exactly. This means that in the long run, Domestic firms will see revenues and cost increase and decrease at exactly the same rate with inflation and deflation. This means that real profits don't change for firms in the long run. For example, if prices increase by 20% in the United States between 2016 and 2017, revenues will increase by 20%, even if the same quantity of goods are produced and sold. But in the long run, wages are variable and will increase at the same rate as prices meaning costs will also increase by 20% between 2016 and 2017. This means that, in the long run, domestic firms don't have a profit motive to supply a greater quantity of real GDP output at higher prices, and a lesser quantity of real GDP output at lower prices. As a result, all firms across the economy will produce exactly the same quantity of goods and services in the long run, regardless of price level. And so, in macroeconomics, the lack of a profit motive causes the long-run aggregate supply curve to be perfectly vertical. Fundamental changes in economic conditions can cause an increase or decrease in an economy's capacity to produce real GDP output at every price level. This is called a change in long-run aggregate supply, and it is visualized by a shift of the long-run aggregate supply curve. There are four determinants of long-run aggregate supply resource prices and availability, actions of government, like corporate taxes, subsidies, and regulation, productivity and technology, and trade. Together, we can remember the four determinants of long-run aggregate supply with the acronym... It's a trap! 
We've already learned how the determinants of RAP can affect short-run aggregate supply. However, these determinants, in addition to trade policy, affect long-run aggregate supply as well. That acronym again is... It's a trap! A change in any of these four determinants, due to a change in economic conditions, will cause a fundamental change in long-run aggregate supply, which will lead to changes in the aggregate economy. A rightward shift of the long-run aggregate supply curve indicates that long-run aggregate supply is increased in the economy, and the economy now has the potential to produce a greater quantity of real GDP at full capacity, no matter the price level in the aggregate economy. Inflation or deflation? Doesn't matter. The domestic economy can now produce more real GDP at full employment. A leftward shift of the long-run aggregate supply curve indicates that aggregate supply has decreased in the economy, and the economy now has the potential to produce a lesser quantity of real GDP output at full capacity, no matter the price level in the aggregate economy. Inflation or deflation? Doesn't matter. The domestic economy simply can't produce as much as it used to, and now will produce less real GDP at full employment. Changes in resource prices and availability, actions of government, and productivity and technology affect aggregate supply in the long run just as it did in the short run. For example, suppose that the Spanish government places a tariff on all resources imported from foreign countries. Imported resources are vital in the production of goods and services in the Spanish economy, and as they become more expensive, production costs increase, and in the long run, Spanish firms will lose the capacity to produce real GDP output at every price level. This increase in imported resource prices will cause a decrease in long-run aggregate supply and a decrease in the production possibilities of the Spanish economy. Suppose that the Greek government decreases corporate profit taxes on domestic firms. Without the burden of paying higher tax rates, firms will scale production in order to earn higher profits. As more plants are built, they're filled with workers and capital, meaning that the capacity of the Greek economy to produce real GDP output will increase in the long run. This decrease in corporate profit taxes will cause an increase in long-run aggregate supply and increase the production possibilities of the Greek economy. Now suppose that community college and university tuition costs increase by 100% in the United States. As the price of higher education doubles, potential members of the workforce will find it harder to acquire human capital and other skills, meaning that they will not be as productive as they could have been once they joined the labor force. Unfortunately, this means that the American workforce will be less productive, meaning that the capacity of the United States economy to produce real GDP output will decrease in the long run. This increase in college tuition costs will cause a decrease in long run aggregate supply and decrease the production possibilities of the American economy. Trade policies can affect the flow of important resources and technologies in and out of economic systems. When trade is open between two countries, it allows the flow of valuable resources to be exchanged between those countries, allowing both countries to acquire needed inputs that they wouldn't have without trade. This means that aggregate economies can expand their production possibilities beyond what they would have been able to produce before trade. Likewise, closing off trade between two countries means lesser quantities of valuable resources are being exchanged between those countries, ultimately reducing an economy's capacity to produce. When trade policies change, it fundamentally changes aggregate supply, and therefore, the economy as a whole. For example, suppose the United States government repeals a free trade agreement with Canada and Mexico. Imported resources in the production of goods and services in the American economy will become more expensive, and production costs will increase in the long run. As a result, American firms will lose the capacity to produce real GDP output at every price level. The breakdown of trade between the United States and their North American partners will increase the price of imported resources and will cause a decrease in long-run aggregate supply, which ultimately decreases production possibilities for the American economy. Now suppose that China exports innovative technologies to North Korea. These new technologies boost productivity of all North Korean firms by 100%, meaning North Korean firms can now produce twice as many goods and services as they used to in the same amount of time. This increase in productivity and technology will cause an increase in long-run aggregate supply and increase the production possibilities of the North Korean economy. And that's long-run aggregate supply. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below 
so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, including quick micro and macro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my aggregate equilibrium video, or you can click here for my macro minute video on comparing long run aggregate supply and PPCs. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.